Welcome back. You are watching The Global Eye. Brazil voters are just days away from heading to the polls for a presidential election that has deepened divisions in the South American nation. The upcoming elections have been shrouded by an unprecedented climate of tension and violence. Right-wing incumbent Jair Bolsonaro is going up against his left-wing rival, former President Luis Inácio Lula da Silva. Opinion polls have shown Bolsonaro lagging behind the former president. However, Bolsonaro has suggested that he may reject the results if he loses and has also been making allegations that Brazil's voting systems were vulnerable to widespread fraud for months. Meanwhile, the U.S. Senate just recently passed a resolution backing a free election in Brazil and denouncing efforts to incite political violence and undermine the electoral process. Several other candidates are also seeking the presidency. If nobody wins, a second round of voting is scheduled for October 30th. Joining us now to discuss these elections is Guilherme Casaros, Professor of Political Science, uh, joining us from Sao Paulo. Uh, Guilherme, if I would ask you about the violence, tension that has been on in Brazil over this election, what is your sense, if voted out, will Bolsonaro go quietly? Oh, thank you for having me. Bolsonaro will most definitely not go quietly, and that's what really concerns most Brazilians right now. He has repeatedly stated that he's not going to accept the election's results. He has summoned his supporters to take the streets in case Lula wins, uh, because he refuses to accept the idea that Lula might win over him um, in these elections, since Lula is seen as a corrupt on his side by his supporters. So I think that th this defeat is going, going to bring a lot of turmoil to the streets, at least uh, for a couple of days or weeks after the elections result in case Lula wins. And of course, we have to also consider that Bolsonaro is backed by both the security forces, the state-based security forces, and by the military. We don't know exactly how many military officials are totally loyal to Bolsonaro's authoritarian mm -hmm. uh, project or scheme, but this is also a matter of concern. We have citizens in Brazil who are armed as of now. Right. Brazil was a country with no, no much access to guns. And now, since 2018 until today, more than 700,000 Brazilians have had access to guns. So this is also another matter of concern in this very violent context that we are in. Right. Uh, give us a sense of the signs of a military coup in Brazil, or a sign that if Bolsonaro loses his election, he will submit the election result. I think a military coup... Um, the likes of which we had in the past is very unlikely to happen because the military are not really united uh, behind Bolsonaro right now, or it's still uncertain whether his support among the military is that much high or that much significant to justify a coup. Uh, but what we can see, though, is a situation very similar to the one that we saw in the United States on January 6, 2021. Um, supporters of Bolsonaro trying to invade public buildings, trying to uh, threaten uh, Supreme Court ministers, justices. So I, I think that the scenario is more likely to be one of violence rather than one of full democratic breakdown. But yes, if there is violence in the streets, depending mm -hmm. on how things unfold, that might really uh, beat up our democracy right now. We have a very young democracy, by the way, in Brazil. It's a 40-year-old democracy, and I've never seen anything like that uh, oh. happening on the eve of elections. Right. Uh, what are the reasons why Jair Bolsonaro is lagging behind in these polls? What's making him unpopular? Well, Bolsonaro has run uh, a very radicalized and rather incompetent uh, administration. We have to consider, well, the economic figures are, are improving right now after the pandemic and uh, in the context of the Ukraine-Russia war. So uh, in, in one sense, there are some economic figure, figures that are improving, but Bolsonaro has pretty much ignored uh, many other issues so important to Brazilians, from health care, uh, more than 680,000 people died uh, from COVID-19 on his watch, uh, education, uh, public security, some other figures in other areas of public policy um, has not, ha have not improved uh, consistently. Not to mention the fact 
that uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to the situation of the economy, even though the figures are improving, we still have more than 30 million Brazilians suffering from poverty. So this is also something uh, that we have to consider. So Bolsonaro has stagnated at some 35 percent of voting intentions in, in recent polls, while Lula, who can capture that effective memory from the past. Lula ran a very successful government until 2010. So I think that also makes the difference uh, when Bolsonaro and Lula get face to face. People re remember of the, 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 the good old times of the Lula administration very fondly because the economy was doing better and Brazil was in a much better global position uh, as well. Right, and if you fee, if Jair Bolsonaro, very quickly, we've run out of time, uh, if Jair Bolsonaro continues to be in power by force, rejects the election result, EU, the US, they've already said that they may downgrade the relationship with Brazil. Is that a worry in the country at this juncture? I think that not so many people are worried about the military coup per se. So that's the reason why we sort of assume that there will be no international backing to Bolsonaro's authoritarian scheme in case it happens. So I, I think that most uh, uh, governments around the world, they are just sitting back and waiting for the next administration to take office. And even though uh, the possibility of an executive takeover or a breakdown is of concern, that's certainly not the priority of most government, governments uh, out, abroad. Right. Uh, we've run out of time. But uh, Guilherme Castle Rose, thank you so much for joining us here on Global Eye, giving us your view on uh, the tense election in Brazil at this point. Let's get you the latest from Iran now. Protests over the death of a young woman, Mehsa Amini, continue even as security pushes back. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi said her death has saddened all, but the government cannot allow the ongoing chaos disrupting peace in the society. Radhika Udas and Arundhati Ramnan report. Right. Uh, there have been a large number of casualties in Iran as a result of these protests as well. And uh, many Iranian women taking to the streets to protest against the killing of Mehsa Amini. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Global Eye. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.